there's indeed an African momentum in support of African agriculture. A woman's first priority is how do I feed my family. The woman will make sure people are fed, fed properly before she feeds herself. If we want to empower a woman, you empower the nation. I think the advocacy has been, how can we then focus on the women? How do we then get, especially for Africa, which still has a lot of potential in terms of agricultural productivity, to get back to farming and make business out of farming? Agriculture contributes only 38% of the GDP, and yet something like 80% of the Tanzanian population is engaged in agriculture. There is another statistic that 70%, over 70% of these farmers are women. In order for the uh, agriculture sector to really move forward in this country and to, be, to transform this economy, um, it is imperative that we invest in women. Next year our target is to touch the target of 10% budgetary allocation to the agricultural sector. And if we allocate that kind of budget to the sector, I know, as I said, women will be beneficiaries of this kind of uh, uh, assistance from the government. Extension used to work, by the way, during my mother's days. We used to have a mature man coming from the same village, wearing uniform, arriving on a, mo a bicycle, and would come, and my father was working away and we'll talk to my mother, show her what she's supposed to do. That respect was there. We do need extension services to transfer knowledge to the farmers. We do need extension services to make them familiarize themselves with the new technology. In most countries, extension is their mail. And clearly there's a strong advantage in making sure that they are female. Now all of a sudden we're saying, oh, you know what, because we don't have women extension workers talking to women, it all depends on the context. Just understand the local context. Don't disturb it, try to keep harmony. And then it's easier to even change some of the things that happen that should not be happening. You know, when you talk about uh, uh, economic activities, for we Africans, you are talking of agriculture. And you can't talk of agriculture without land. For starters, policies. The policies do not support, in country, in most African governments, do not support women farmers because women farmers do not own land. For Kenya particularly, we now, women now can have land tenure. They can now inherit land because of a new constitution. But for much of Africa, that's not the, the case. Historically, women have been disadvantaged in terms of accessing uh, finance, you know, from traditional commercial banks and, and other financing infrastructure. The titling process is still way behind, and therefore they have no collateral to go and borrow money. Even if they don't own the land, we need to recognize and acknowledge that they are there mostly to feed their families. In order for us to really begin to address uh, economic transformation through agriculture, we need to really take a close look at addressing the, women, the issues that affect women. So what we need, I think, in terms of our government uh, is policy interventions that impact women farmers, that not only impact small farmers, but impact women farmers. So I feel that uh, they, there needs to be a balance in the way we support everyone, that we need equity issues and realizing that the most marginalized group, but one which works on farming to feed our nations, are women. Well, this is now beginning to take root is the PPP, public-private partnerships, where the public sector, i.e. the government, does its role. The private sector then comes in and builds on what has been done. And there's a fourth P, it's the people. So it has to be PPPP, public-private people partnership, which means that the government plays a role, private sector plays a role, and civil society and farmers and everybody has an important role to play because this continent is not just going to feed itself, we have to feed the world. We have to keep the other players, private sector, governments, 
even donor organizations honest about their commitments. And then the farmer's voice. Even if we don't bring farmers, we need people who understand the farmers, who work with the farmers. It's also affirmative action now by, uh, by governments uh, and development agencies to support women uh, specifically, targeted at women's activities. And, and this, this is critical for the long-term and sustainable development of Africa. It has been very difficult getting credit down to the small farmer. Uh, it is important that our women are entitled to getting uh, you know, access to credit uh, from our financial institutions. You know, uh, the, the fact that uh, you know, they're women, it doesn't mean that uh, they cannot actually you know, set up their own accounts. Uh, they can actually have their own title deeds. Uh, commercial banks, the NGOs in this sector, and, and government and development uh, you know, partners support the, 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 the consolidation of these activities at the grassroots level for, for women and then link this up with the entire value chain up to the markets so that women don't only produce for subsistence but increasingly they produce to generate income. Uh, uh, and I believe that uh, it will be critical therefore that uh, we strengthen the capacity of these non-state actors to really make a case for the increased support of women farmers. If you want to, to empower a woman, you empower the nation. You educate, you educate a girl today, you are educating the nation. And there is a saying that if you want to empower any African household, you have to empower women. The woman is it, but supported by our men.